Welcome to Everything Co-op, bringing you information on how cooperatives can help improve your quality of life. This show is being sponsored by the National Co-op Bank, NCB. The NCB is dedicated to strengthening communities nationwide for the delivery of banking and financial services for the nation's cooperatives, their members, and other socially responsible organizations. For more information on the power of community ownership, visit ncb.coop. That's ncb.coop. Now stay tuned for your host, Vernon Oaks. Good morning, everyone. This is Vernon Oaks. Welcome to this Thursday morning, talking to you about cooperatives and the benefits of cooperatives. You know, the National Cooperative Bank sponsors this program so that we can get people the information about co-ops that maybe somebody out there would want to start a co-op or search out a co-op that you could either live in or do your finances in in terms of credit unions, or you may want to locate a co-op that you could work in, a worker co-op. Um, But today, what I want to talk about is the president's uh, State of the Union address, which was two nights ago, and um, how this impacts on co-ops or how co-ops can impact on what he wants to get accomplished in his next two years. He only has two years left. He's had six years in the White House. I think he's done a lot. I think he's going to be remembered as a great president, uh, particularly given all of the stuff that he's gotten from the Republican Party and and folks that would not like to see somebody of color in the White House. Uh, but he's done a great job, and um, he wants to get a lot more accomplished in his next two years. And I wanted to talk about how he could get even more of what he wants to get accomplished by looking at this cooperative model. You know, he said that the shadow of the crisis has passed, and the state of the union is strong. <clears throat> You know, that crisis has come in several different ways when you had two wars, one in Afghanistan and one in Iraq when he took over. He said he had 180,000, almost 180,000 troops in those countries, and it's down to 15,000 today. Uh, And then we had the economic problems of 2007. Um, Already, you know, this, this economic problem started with housing collapse when people had gotten into mortgages that they could not afford, and they would get in with low interest rates, and then the interest rates would uh, would adjust upwards, and then people found out that they could not pay their bills, and therefore they had all of these foreclosures, and there was a triple effect so that the economy plundered. It was called the Great Recession as opposed to the Great Depression in the 20s. It was a recession, and just a lot of people lost their homes. And, you know, it, it talk about the wealth uh, and how much wealth that people have in their homes, the value, the assets that they have. Because I did have a gentleman on this program, uh, Mr. Jim Joseph, who was the ambassador to South Africa. He was African-American, and he was the ambassador to South Africa when Mandela was president for the three years that Mandela was president. And he said that a lot of our programs, at least this is what I took away from this conversation, that a lot of the programs that the U.S. has, like welfare, like food stamps, um, they sort of help you to live, but they do not help you to get wealth. You will not get out of the predicament that you're in with handouts. Um, Some people have become accustomed to them, such that they may have three generations on welfare, but they will stay in that predicament until they find a mechanism where they can pay for their current living, which is what food stamps and welfare and Section 8 program for housing does. They can pay for their current living and have savings for the future. They can create wealth. And we had another lady on this program, a wonderful lady who's the president of the International Cooperative Alliance, Dame Pauline Green, and she said that co-ops helps people to get out of poverty with dignity. You know, that dignity just caught me because the welfare and the food stamps and Section 8, there is no dignity. And most people that you talk to that are receiving those benefits, which I'm not knocking by any stretch of the imagination. I'm not putting them down. I'm just saying that they do not give people dignity 
and they do not allow people to come out of poverty at all because they do not have a way of creating savings or creating wealth or creating assets. None of the programs that we that we, the U.S. have that I know about, except for the limited equity co-op housing, uh, and HUD doesn't do much of that anymore. Matter of fact, they're doing real little to zero. They don't do put money into investing in such that folks that live in the housing can create wealth. So I wanted to address some of the things that President Obama talked about, the things that he wants to get accomplished in this radio program, and to, to talk about how the cooperative business model can help him to get where he wants to be, which is to help everyday people, those that are middle class already and those that want to get to middle class. So you, you in America, one of the nice things about America is that we can have someone like President Obama who was born relatively poor. They may have been in the lower echelons of middle class, his grandparents, but he could become president, and with writing books and perhaps making investments, he is considered wealthy now. So in America, you can move from poverty to middle class and from middle class to wealth. You can do that in America, where in a lot of other countries, that's just not a possibility. If you're born poor, the likelihood is that you're going to live poor and die poor. But in America, you can move up the ladder. What it takes, uh, it takes education. you got to have knowledge. I've got a lot of people that I've known as I have gone through, and I've been fortunate enough to get a high school degree and a bachelor's degree and a master, two masters. So I've gotten education, but what I've, what I've realized, and if I had known this earlier, what I would be looking for is making sure I got knowledge. Knowledge. The reason that knowledge is so important is because when you have knowledge, you can make better choices in life. And with better choices, you can live a better life. It's, it's really quite simple. It's, the more knowledge you have, the better choices you can make. And that's also at the polls when it comes election time that folks would go out and vote. If the Democrats have gone out and voted this last election, we, wouldn't have had, we would not have had so many Republicans in today. But folks did not go and vote. So you make better choices with more knowledge. The more knowledge you have, the better choices you make. And with better choices, the better life you can live. You can help you to move from poverty to middle class. And again, one of the reasons I like co-op so much, and I talk about this every Thursday, is their principles. We've got the shadow of the crisis has passed and the state of the union is strong. The crisis of the two wars and the Great Recession have passed. And I think Mr. Obama's administration has done a great job in making sure that those crises did not crumble us and that we didn't go further down. And he turned the tide around and the economy is strong. The state of the union is strong. But every week I talk to you about the principles of cooperatives and there are five, seven principles. If there is, if a business is a cooperative, then they go by these five, these seven principles, volunteer and open membership, which means that anybody can be a, a member. It does not make any difference of your race, your gender, your sexual orientation, how old you are or young you are. Volunteer and open membership. The second one is democratic member control. One member, one vote. It, it's not like the stocks in a corporation. The more stock you own, the better, the bigger vote you have. So wealth then ends up running things. The more money you have, the more votes you have in a stock capitalistic corporation. Um, we're in a cooperative corporation, you end up with one member, one vote. 
So that power is is with every member, not with the one that has the most money. You have members' economic participation, and that goes two ways, that, that you have to pay to get in, and when and if there are profits, then there are dividends, and so you get money back. And that's the way you can create wealth with the cooperative, where in the, even the limited equity housing cooperative, you can create wealth where you do not get that in a, an apartment building, even if HUD is funding it. If HUD is funding an apartment building, normally the wealthy are the ones that own the apartment building, and so that if there are if, if there is profit, then they are the ones who get the profit. The fourth principle is autonomy and independence. Extremely important that nobody can come in and control that business except for the members. They have to be autonomous. They have to be independent. And they have to get the knowledge that I was talking to you about earlier so they can make informed decisions. So that the fifth principle is perhaps the most important, and it's the most important to me, and that is education, training, and information. Because you need the education, you need the knowledge, you need the information so that you can make informed decisions. So that when you have autonomy and independence, you will come out, you, you will vote, and therefore the members then control the, the business to a democratic process. The sixth principle is cooperation among cooperatives. So that what you end up getting is that credit unions work with housing cooperatives and housing cooperatives work with food cooperatives. And so that folks end up raising each other's business up, growing each other's business. So, you know, you know in a cooperative, um, you, you get this, this sense that um, whenever I go to a conference with cooperatives or um, any meetings with cooperatives, you find that people share information extremely easy such that because everybody wants everybody to be successful. This sense of competition, of dog-eat-dog, dog, that I got mine and you have to get yours, that doesn't exist or I have not experienced that in the cooperative world. Folks are really working with each other, cooperation among cooperatives, to pass this information along so that folks can um, get the information they need. And the seventh principle is concern for the community, which we'll talk about a little bit more right after the break. If you have any questions, please call in at 1-800-450-7876 with questions or comments. We'll be right back. News updates on the web at woldcnews.com. Information is power. This is WOL's motto, and this is one of the reasons that they have been a, a great support to this program. They're wanting us also to get this information out so that more and more people can uh, perhaps start their own business. They can come together and, and start a business, creating wealth, creating jobs, um, building up their communities. You know, this is um, the president says the economy is growing. Uh, we have um, uh, we created jobs at a faster pace uh, even ever since 1999. Unemployment is lower than it has been before the financial crisis of 2007. More kids are graduating than ever uh, before. The problem with the graduation rate is that a lot of people have high debt. Um, the problem with the unemployment is the, the unemployment rate is lower, but Folks are underemployed. They are not making the kind of money they may have made before 2007. The problem with the economy is growing is who's making the profit? Who is getting wealthy? Uh, you have people that may have been making $20 an hour before the recession in 2007, and now they are flipping burgers or something, making 8 to 10 bucks an hour. So you, you, you're finding that um, people are just – not making the money, too many people are not either employed or 
they are making less money than they were making before the recession. So that's a, still a huge problem in our economy. And even though the uh, unemployment rate is low, or than it has been since the financial crisis. You have a lot of people that are just not in the market. They're not looking for jobs. They've gotten to the point where they've lost hope. So, you know, things still need a lot of work. And he asked a question, this is President Obama, asked a question uh, Tuesday night, will we accept our economy where a few of us do very well, or will we commit ourselves to an economy that generates rising incomes and chances for everyone who makes the effort. So that if those folks that have lost hope and are not making the effort now, if those folks that are not trained are willing to go back and get the education that they need, uh, will we create an economy where everybody w gets a rising income or create wealth? And I suggest to you in this program today and I will keep preaching this to anybody that will listen, that the co-op model is a way of creating the jobs and it's a way of getting people to create wealth. And the activity of about 30,000 cooperatives in the U.S. contributes an estimate of $154 billion to the nation's total income. Co-ops have helped to create over 2.1 million jobs with an impact on wages and salaries of uh, almost $75 billion. This was a study done in 2009. And um, last week we had Ann Reynolds on the show from the, the Center on Cooperatives, and she will be back on the show next week, and we'll talk more about these kinds of statistics and the president's uh, State of the Union address. You know, cooperative business have lower failure rates than traditional corporations, corporations and small business. After the first year, co-ops have about a 10% failure rate versus normal have 60 to 80% failure rate. And after five years, Co-op, about 90% of cooperatives are still in business versus 3 to 5% of traditional business. Whew. Huge. This was a study done by the World Council of Credit Unions in 2007. So cooper cooperatives work. They even have a lower startup cost. Can It can be a lot lower. Um, and what we found out that the wages in an Oak, Oakland, California uh, cleaning, the house cleaning cooperative, these are folks that have made service, the worker owner's medium income increased to over $40,000. And before, and it's, this is cleaning company now, $40,000 a year in Oakland, where before the co-op, these Latina, Latina owners had a medium income of 24000 So what I'm saying to you is that co-ops are a way that you can get into a business, you can start a business, come together as a group of people, and start a business. You have a better chance of success. 90% of co-ops are successful after five years versus 3 to 5%. Sometimes that's because there's a lower cost to get in, there's also a better sense of education. And if you make yourself available, you can get the education that you need at inexpensively by, by, by reaching out to the U.S. Federation of Worker Cooperatives or NCBA, National Cooperative Business Association. You can reach out to people that will help you get the education you need at a very low cost to no cost. So you can get the education you need, which I call just-in-time education. You can get the education you need to run your business successfully to the place where that if you're making $24,000 a year in Washington, D.C., or New York, or Oakland, California, or Chicago, cleaning homes by coming together as a group of workers, you can raise your salaries to $40,000 a year. It's almost double. And the other interesting part about this is if you make a profit, you get to share into it. 
You know, we had Equal Exchange on the program for three weeks in December. It's a fascinating business. Uh, 150 employees, 117 of them are owners. You have to be work in the business a year, get training within that year, and then you're voted on by the 117 whether you come in or not. When they make profit, for every $100 that they make profit, I believe they told me, and I need to go back and verify this, that they 50% of it stays in the business and 50% of it gets distributed out to the workers, the worker owners. So not only do you get a salary, you have a chance of making profit off the business. And it was also seemed wise to be more successful because everybody is invested in it so that you don't have people that are loafing or stealing. Because once you understand, once people understand that they own the business, then they take better care of it. When they understand that they get a chance to decide what happens in the business. This volunteer and open membership autonomy and independence, they are the ones, the people, the members in the business are the ones that make the decisions. How much vacation do you get? I was surprised in the president's State of the Union address, and he said that, I think he said, 40 million people do not have sick leave in the U.S. I was just surprised at that number. That was the only thing in his presentation that surprised me. And he wants to put in place where every worker in the U.S. has seven days of sick leave. Uh, 43 million workers have no paid sick leave, is what he said. I also would like to under... <clears throat> It'd be nice to have the stat on worker co-ops. I would be surprised if worker co-ops if there is any worker co-op that does not give themselves sick leave, that if their child is sick, they can stay and take care of them or take them to the doctor. So, <clears throat> excuse me, my message to you today is that co-ops can get the president, this cooperative model can get him where he wants to be, and he calls it middle-class economics works expanding opportunity works. And I totally agree with them. But this opportunity of having a slice of the pie, having a slice of the profit, having a say in the decisions in the business, those kinds of things really help an organization to grow and to work. You know, if you have any comments out there, you can call in at 1-800-450-7876. If, like last week, Ron called in and said he was working on his business plan. If you have an idea of a business, if there's a two or three of you, five of you would like to come together and start a business, call us in and let's talk about it a little bit. I, I can't stress enough how this cooperative model will help the president to get where he wants to go in this economy in his next two years. He said, will we allow ourselves to be sorted into factions and turn against one another? Or will we recapture the sense of a common purpose that has, all, that has always propelled American before. In the cooperative business model, there's nothing but a common purpose. There is nothing but folks working together for the good of the group. And this is why I like them so much when I would go into meetings of affordable housing cooperatives where perhaps the, the largest degree was a high school education. And you would get people solving problems together, making decisions that is best for the group. And they get very successful cooperatives working because they're making decisions that's best for the group. National Co-op Bank is sponsoring this program so that you can get the information you need so that you can control your destiny. And this is what co-ops do. 
Please call in at 1-800-450-7876. We'll be right back. News updates on the web at woldcnews.com. Welcome back, everybody. This is Vernon Noakes on Everything Cooperative. You know, National Cooperative Bank is sponsoring this program, and their mission is to help cooperatives grow by supporting and being an advocate for American cooperatives and their members, placing special emphasis on serving the needs of communities that are economically challenged. And that's most of the African-American communities, Native American communities, Latino American communities. Yeah. economically challenged, which causes NCB to have a challenge to make sure that they they give out loans that they can get back and get back with interest so that they can stay afloat, stay as a business, and help uh, these cooperatives grow. And as I've said to you, more cooperatives are successful than the normal ones, 90% after five years, because they work together as a team and they bring they learn how to make decisions cooperatively. And we have Barbara on the phone with us today with a comment or question. Good morning, Barbara. Good morning, Barbara. How are you today? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing better today. I got you on the phone. (laughs) Thank you. I need your phone number so I can call you uh, when I have the day off. Well, Barbara, would you... uh, the, the person on the phone would get yours so I can call you. Is this related to co-op business? Yes, sir. What's your question, though, so everybody will know? I want to know how I can get started. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get my partners together now. This is the first time I heard this. Okay. Well, he'll take your number, and I will call you. Um, and like I said, the National Cooperative Business Association, you can reach them with ncba.coop. And they have uh, information about how you start a U.S. Worker Federation if it's a worker co-op. But let me give you the definition of co-ops and everybody out there. A co-op is any business you can think of. It's the difference if, of it is that if the main two are if the workers own it, if the employees own the business, then it's called a worker co-op. They own and control the business. If the people that use the product or services own the business, then it's called a consumer co-op. And the biggest ones are housing co-ops because the, the residents that live in it, they use the housing, they own it. Or credit unions, the people that put their money into the banks and take out loans, they own the business, they de- elect the board of directors. So those are your two main uh, types. So it depends on which one you want to uh, create would be where I would help you go to to get the help that you might need. I'm creating a worker co-op right now. Um, so... It's it's interesting. And the first week I had a Mrs. Mack from uh, on the program a year and a half ago now, and she said, I asked, why aren't there more co-ops? And she said, it's hard work. And in the president's message messages all the way through his six years as president, he talks about working hard and getting rewarded for hard work, which is a an American value. And if you want to get in a co-op, it, it, it's not easy because you have to learn how to run a business, and then you have to run that business. Well, um, yeah, I put it like this. I've been working for someone else for 50 years. Amen. I think I picked up one or two pointers, but I never had to start. And I think I got enough experience, and then the person that I'm going into business with she has enough experience that we can start a business of our own. Yeah, that's and fascinating. Mind working. Okay, <laughs> that's okay. I got it. But that that is what's so interesting about the co that people can come together and take their skill sets, the things that you've learned, the things that she's learned, add some more knowledge to it about how you operate a business, and then you can have a successful business so that when and if it's profitable, you get to share that profit. And for 50 years, I doubt very seriously if people have shared the property, those ones that owned it. They may give you a decent salary. Mm -hmm. I put it like this. I blew up everything, and I try to keep a note of everything, but I started working for someone else when I was 16 years old, and uh, he didn't (laughs) – 
He didn't think I was picking it up until he tried to uh, take 15 minutes off of my paycheck. I said, I don't think so. I worked. And I think you should pay me for my 15 minutes that I worked overtime. He said, oh, I forgot about that. No, you didn't forget. You didn't think I was counting. But I, I know every penny that goes on my check, but that's no here, no there. Well, no, that, that's what the president talked about, too. He said he wanted people to get paid for their overtime because more often than yeah. not, people don't or they get slighted. So what you'd end up finding in the corporate, in the, in the capitalistic society, too often, the people that own the business try to hurt the the workers by not paying them overtime, by not providing them sick leave, by not providing whatever is needed, the clean, uh, safe workspaces. But in a worker co-op, because the workers are the ones that are making the decisions, then the workers more often than not choose. That's why I said I believe if I could do a study of worker co-ops, I'd find that all of them provide sick leave. I'd be totally surprised if workers would not provide themselves sick leave. Well, so somewhere I read in the Bible, what you're doing to others as you have them doing to you. And you're supposed to love one another. You're not supposed to always put your foot on their throat. No, that's not my 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 goal. I want to start a business where we all can make money. Do you mind telling us on air what kind of business you want to start? I was trying to take care of the elderly people. Fantastic. Because that's what my, my, my partner is. That's what she does now. There's a, a please give your number because there's a, a cooperative development fund, I think it is, or foundation, cooperative development foundation. They have some money and they pr- produce grants to help with uh, businesses like yours. Thank you, sir. I really, I'm, I'll be glad to talk to you when you get off. Not, not before six, because I'm doing a Bible study class. Okay. Well, uh, and I believe at cdf.coop uh, is their web page, if I got it right. But I'll make sure I, I get to you that information. And I was surprised when I looked at their web page that they were helping organizations provide um, assistance uh, for seniors and, and providing oh, grants for that. They had a, a pool of money to help with that. She was talking about it. I'm doing it my homework, but it's still nice talking to you. And I'm going to give you, the young man my phone number. Thank you, dear. Thanks Thank so much you. for calling God in. Bless. I have a prosperous new year. God bless you, too. Thanks. I thank Barbara for calling in. And, again, if anybody else out there have a comment or a question, you can call in at 1-800-450-7876. Uh, there's a lot of seniors, um, and I'm in that category right now. But so far, God, it's been good, and I don't have to uh, go to assisted living or anything like that. But there are seniors out there that, that do. Um, and you know what the president talked about was a, a family – up in Minnesota, and Rebecca and Ben Early in Minneapolis uh, had written, Rebecca had written him talking about uh, it is amazing what you can bounce back from when you have to. We are a strong, tight-knit family who has made it through some very, very hard times. And he went on to say that there's a lot of people in, in in this world, in this U- in the United States, that have that is their story. They represent millions who have worked hard, scrimped and sacrificed and retooled. You know, in the African-American community, that's what we do. I mean, and as you, it, this, this proverb of do unto others as others would, as you, as you would, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Uh, that's not what a lot of people do. Uh, and and as Barbara said, more often than not, or too often at least, somebody's got their foot at your throat trying to take from you as opposed to paying you what you have, have worked for or giving you opportunities. And it's also been a very amazing to me in my life study that how people don't want you to be educated, don't want you to vote, because they know if you are not educated, then they can tell you what to do or you are slavery to them. When you don't have knowledge, then you're slavery, you're still slavery unto others, like credit. And it says in the Bible, as 
Barbara was just talking about the Bible is that the new master is going to be the one that, that you owe, that you owe money to. And that master will take from you, and it's called interest, take a portion of your hard-earned money every month by credit card debt, card debt, and mortgages. I'm not against debt. I'm, I am, though, totally against you having either too much debt or this credit card debt when it's 11, 12, 15, 21, 22 percent debt that you are end up paying more and more of your hard-earned money uh, to somebody else to increase their wealth. That's a whole nother uh, topic of conversation. But just like Rebecca, we can bounce back from a lot, and we've shown it in the African-American community how we help each other. Uh, in the African-American community, um, it's it's like we come together when there's aunts and uncles that have no kin, no blood relationship or brothers and sisters, and we just help each other. Um, we are a strong, tight-knit family who have made it through some very, very hard times. Um, if you come together, work together, as Barbara was talking about, she and her friend, and if she could get a couple more people to have different uh, skill sets, come together, create a worker cooperative, then, oh, but Barbara, if you're still listening, I have a friend of mine in California that's looking at doing a, a, a cooperative, but he's going to make his a consumer co-op so that the seniors own the cooperative, those people that come in and live in it, just like affordable housing cooperative. He's going to look at assisted living co-op and have different levels of assisted living and those seniors would own it. And so then they will have a say of how it is operated. He has a great idea. He's been working on it for a couple of years now. What can happen is we can create jobs by creating worker co-ops. We can create jobs that are community oriented, that are social responsible jobs. Most co-ops are founded because there is some need in the community. We have a gentleman talking about the history when when blacks in the South were uh, uh, walking and boycotting to vote, like in Selma, the movie Selma's portraying. We found that the white uh, store owners would not sell the black farmers gasoline. So they formed a co-op. They formed a gas a purchasing co-op to buy gasoline. They rent it and bought trucks and they went across state lines. They bought their gasoline and brought it back and distributed it between the members of the cooperative so that they could run their machinery and farm. So there was a need and too often not and, and not worker co-ops are formed when there are needs. Worker co-ops are also formed to solve a community need. So they're community oriented. So they know the community, they have the pulse of the community, more often than not the members of the cooperative live in the community, and such that, um, as Dame Pauline Green once said, and I heard her at a speech, she said that the D in the DNA of a co-op is social responsibility, so more often than not you don't need a division or a vice president of social responsibility. That's what co-ops do. They are in it to make sure that the, the the plant the the planet is left better off or as good as we found it that we don't do things to hurt the planet to hurt the community national cooperative bank um, provides comprehensive banking services cooperatives and other member owned organizations throughout this country what makes NCB unique is that the bank was created to address the financial needs of an underserved market niche people who join together cooperatively to meet personal, social, or business needs, especially in the low-income community. So you can get to NCB by going to ncb.coop, and we're going to take another break. Please don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. News updates on the web at woldcnews.com.
This is Vernon Oaks talking to you about cooperatives, the benefits of co-ops, how they can help our economy, and today the conversation is how the cooperative business model can help the president, President Obama, to meet um, his mission, his goals that he outlined in his uh, State of the Union speech uh, two nights ago. You know, going back to that speech, he talked about this couple in Minnesota, and he said that uh, one of the things that anybody that have children know is that we need child care. We need high-quality child care. Um, that's what I needed when I had children in the home because both parents worked. Um, that's a necessity. He talked about during World War II that that U.S. provided this national child care. I didn't know that. Uh, it was interesting to find out because the, when the husband was off to war, the wife was working in the plants back home, and we needed child care. And now you ha- almost have to in order to make ends meet, you have to have both parents working. That's a change from when my parents uh, and my grandparents were were the breadwinners of the house. So that you need child care. And he talks about a $3,000 deduction to help with this child care. But I want to give him another option. You know, in in Greenbelt, there's a, a child care cooperative. There's one in Southeast. Um, I went by and visited the one in Southeast. I've tried to get both of them on the program to talk about how they work. But my understanding and reading about child care, a cooperative child care, is that the parents uh, own it. I'm not sure if it's a worker co-op or a consumer co-op. But the parents will come in and volunteer. And that keeps the cost down so that you can have high-quality child care by providing cooperative businesses or cooperative child care businesses. And you may have a staff. They both do have a staff, a full-time staff. But that staff is augmented by parents coming in and volunteering so that they volunteer their time, particularly when they don't have money. The one in Southeast, the one that I saw was on Capitol Hill, and the parents may there have the money, but they can still provide two things. They can provide their time uh, so that it costs less to get the child care, but also by being there, they can be with their children, which is one of the things I think is missing when you have both parents working. You know, you often get them up in the morning, and out to school, they're in school all day, then after school programs, they get off at work at 5 or 6 o'clock, they, if they live anywhere, they're at home at 7, dinner, and put them to sleep. They don't have a lot of time for their children. So if they're working in the child care, they can also bond with their children and, and, and provide that guidance that is needed. And teaching, I found that as a teacher, that those students that had, a relationship, a very strong relationship with their parents. The parents had a strong relationship with the children, made much better grades. They were much stable, much calmer, much easier to work with. For those children that did not have that relationship with the parents, did not come to PTA meetings, or the parents were not at, there asking about the homework assignments or seeing how their children were doing, made the worst grades and more often than not had the most discipline problems with. So that one-to-one relationship with the parents, I found, was the key to getting the children to learn. Um, So the president has asked for better child care. He's asked for the sick leave. He's asked that the unions would be strengthened and not weakened, and that to give American workers a voice. The co-ops do this. The co-ops give the worker the voice. They have to say on how it works. That's why there's more of them that are successful, and that's why that the workers, by them being successful and making profits, they not only get a salary, 
but they also get a dividend so they can increase their wealth. Uh, when one of our guests was in, it's talking about the farmers in Africa and Latin America said that they could not provide food for their family for the year. But by getting into a co-op and learning how to create better products, by being in a co-op where they can purchase their the goods that they needed at lower prices and better quality, including seed, and then at a co-op that could market their products to get them into other um, markets, could even be here in the U.S., then they got a better price and so that they could have food for their family for the year. They could get their kids into education, which said, which President talked about the, the history of education in the U.S. and that how he wants to put forth a proposal to where every American can go to community colleges and get two years free, no cost. I think that's exciting. I would lo love if these co-op, these community colleges could also teach co-ops, could teach this, this business of cooperatives. Uh, he said in order to get this free, that you had to earn it by getting good grades and graduate on time. So there has to be some sense of you will go to class, you will get the knowledge you need, and that you would make the grades, and therefore you could keep going. He also wants to, for those students to come away with high student loans, and there are a lot of kids that are doing that, that there will be ways that they can get lower payments or lower interest rates so that they're not, uh, that so that the student loans, he said that the student debt doesn't derail anybody's dreams. You know, he talked about companies that do do the education benefits and paid apprenticeships and like CVS and UPS. I really wish he would look at Eagle Exchange and what they do with education of their employees and how they get them to apprenticeship would be where you out, you learn, you watch somebody else, you learn what to do. Uh, I really like that model for, for uh, getting knowledge. The old apprenticeship, you'd work for somebody for four, six, eight, 10 years before you go out and start your own business. He said that he wanted people to get higher paying jobs, even if they did not have a higher education. And I get a higher paid job, even if you don't have a higher education. And these cleaning ladies in Oakland are making 40,000 a year where they would make 24 before they're getting a higher paid job, even if they did not get a higher education but they got a higher education by learning how to run a co-op business. You know, you don't get a high a degree, but you get the knowledge. So by working in co-ops, you have to, if you want to join, uh, create a, a co-op or join a co-op, you have to be committed to getting knowledge. You have to be committed to study, get training, get knowledge, get learn how you work together cooperatively, that when there are disagreements and there will be disagreements, you learn how to solve disagreements without being disagreeable. Uh, you know, you can argue and you can debate, but you don't have to tear each other down and that's solving problems, learning how to do that, getting the knowledge you need so that you can make a higher uh, earning. So uh, to me, the, the president, uh, I'm trying to let him know that one way of getting what he is talking about in his speech is by by promoting this cooperative model. He talked about Cuba and some of the foreign policies uh, and how this, this has not worked, this 50-year this program of uh, embargoes and boycotts have, have not worked in Cuba. Uh, there was a delegation of American cooperators that went to Cuba. There, there are co-ops in Cuba. And again, that's the people the, at that individual level, the everyday people are running these businesses, and then everyday people can have democratic control in Cuba or in Latin, any other Latin countries or in Africa, in Asia, in the U.S. You get people working together, people solving issues together, people solving community problems together, and creating wealth at the same time. So in his foreign policies, whether that is uh, – Russian aggression in the Ukraine or getting the Ukrainians to have democratic control in their businesses, this co-op model can work both here and abroad. 
you also get this in 2014, the planet's warmest years, have, 14 of the warmest years have happened in this last 15 years. So you get co-ops that are working on the uh, community and the community problems. So he says a better pol politics is one where we appeal to each other's basic de decency instead of our basic fears. This is what happens in co-ops. We work together. The values of cooperatives are based on the values of self-help, self-responsibility, democracy, equality, equity, and solidarity. In the tradition of the founders of the cooperative movement, cooperative members believe in the ethical values of honesty, openness, social responsibility, and caring for one another. The better politic that he talked about. I like hearing him talk about it, and I would suggest to you that the cooperative model is one way of getting there, and I would love to be able to talk to him about this. It is amazing what you can bounce back from when you have to. We are a strong, tight-knit family who has made it through some very, very hard times. The cooperative model, everybody that's been on this program have talked about creating community, a tight-knit family a larger family, community, working together, overcoming difficult times, what happens in cooperatives. Thank you for listening. Mrs. Uh, Ann Reynolds will be back on next Thursday. Please tune in. Please call in with your comments or questions. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Thanks. News updates on the web at woldcnews.com.